just right on low kicks. He knocked him down! It's over! Oh, He's what out. a finish! And I will knock this guy out. Oh, and he put him down. What a KO win! Brilliant timing, perfect execution. We are live here for Glory 89 for the first time in Borgas Arena here at the Arena Borgas, also known as the White Elephant. And we got a stack card here in Bulgaria, but no bigger fighter in the world than this man here, Badr Hari, who's gonna be in a Grand Prix qualifier fight as he's walking into the arena. We get set here to introduce some of the biggest fights in kickboxing. I'm Bazooka Joe Valtellini, and we got an exciting guest here with me tonight. We've got this man here, Antonio Plazabai. We're used to seeing him in the ring. What are you doing here now? Well, I'm stealing your job. You're stealing Todd's job, and I'm out there on the other side of the glory. So excited to be back and see this. Well, I'm excited to have you call fights with me, man. We got a stacked card. Let's look at some of these fights. The prelim here, what's going to start this night off, we have some exciting fighters. We have Chris One, who's 2-0 in glory, looking to make it 3-0 against the local Dragomir Petrov. And then another glory veteran coming in for the second time, Edward Gafenku is taking on another local Bulgarian fighter, and Theodor Ristov should be some exciting fights. But then we're gonna transition to the big fight card. We got one of these to start off the night. We have a young, talented Moroccan fighter, only 21 years old. Mohamed Tusashi looks to make his debut a special one as he takes on Bulgarian fighter Edward Alexanian. We also have from Bulgaria Alexander Petrov taking on Karim Maburik. And then a fighter we know very well here in glory, Luis Tavares takes on a kickboxing veteran in Bogdan Stoika. And then we have our hometown hero, Stoyan Koprovinsky. Very big night for him tonight. He's gonna try to steal the show here in his hometown, but this is also a rematch for him where he lost, so he's extra motivated to get a good win here against Stoyan Kaliniuk, who wants to ruin the hometown party for Stoyan. And then the champ, the featherweight champ, the featherweight king, Petsch Panamarung, looks to continue dominant and continues to rise as the pound for pound best fighter in kickboxing as he takes on Spain's David Mejia in an exciting championship matchup. And now here comes the big boys, Antonio. Talk us through these fights and these qualifiers. Uh, this is gonna be crazy because we have Badr Hari and Uku Jurjandal. They are both knockout artists, so this fight will not hit the final bell. And the second fight, we will see the Levy after one year layoff, how he's going back and what he's doing. And how he's going to find with the exchange of the opponent in the last minute, not last minute, the last couple of hours. Yeah, and I mean, those heavyweight fights is what make kickboxing so exciting. Every time you, Antonio, you fight, we're on the edge of our seats, so we're excited for those big bouts tonight. But really, the story here tonight, we have Stoyan Koprovlinski fighting in his hometown here, and we know how good Stoyan Koprovlinski is. Nicknamed the Sniper, great career record, has fought, you know, for world titles in the past, so he's very motivated to fight here in Bulgaria. So let's hear what he has to say about fighting at home. Yeah, it, it feels great. It's really a big uh, motivation for me to, f to fight in my home city in Burgas. I haven't fought here in uh, maybe the last six, seven years. So this uh, gives me extra, extra support from the fans. And uh, I'm ready and uh, I'm ready to show them that, uh, that I'm the better fighter and uh, more prepared. Mm, yeah, Bulgari, took some Zardivas, took some Zardinacia Tane. Izlizam za pobeda, še dam vsečko, vsečko od sebe si, da bi zaradvam z neja. A big night here for Stojan. Antonio, you're training partners with Stojan. What does he have to do to stay focused and to get the win tonight? He needs to use the pressure of the, his home crowd and feel like he's really at home to push him to get more explosive, more power, more endurance and to prove to everybody why no one can come to his home and win a fight. Well, we're gonna have to wait to see that fight. That's our co-main event in our main card for Glory 89, but let's get started right away. Now here to the ring, it's Tim Hughes. Beautiful Burgas, Bulgaria. Welcome to Glory Kickboxing. Nine great fights on the card tonight for Glory 89, including five rounds 
for the featherweight championship of the world. Petpatam Room Kiat Mukau comes from Thailand to Bulgaria to defend his championship belt. And one more spot will be filled in Glory's $500,000 heavyweight Grand Prix tournament. It also marks the return to the glory ring of Bader Hari tonight here in Bulgaria. Before we get to our two preliminary bouts of the evening, help me welcome our glory girls, beautiful Stephanie and Bella. Our first preliminary bout of the evening is three three-minute rounds in Glory's lightweight division. This 2019 European Muay Thai champion makes his debut tonight in Burgas. Please welcome Dragomir Petrov. Here comes Dragomir Petrov, nicknamed Drago, hometown of Bulgaria. He's making his glory debut, and one thing you gotta know about Drago, he's known for his wild knockouts. He's been around the fight scene for a while. Got an impressive record of 14 wins, three losses, and seven of those coming by way of knockout. Does anything stand out to you, Antonio, about Drago Petrov? Just last month, he had the big win uh, uh, against the ex-glory fighter Samo Petje. So that proved how his quality and that proved how good he is. And I cannot wait to see him because he is a vicious striker and really a hell hunter. He arrives in Bulgaria on a six-fight winning streak. Here is Chris One. Here comes Chris One, nicknamed the Raptor. He's 2-0 in glory right now. And I know, talking to him, he's ready for the big boys. He's already calling out Stoyan Koprivlinski. He wants the Johnny Vestati. He wants the big guys in the division. He's got a fan-friendly style with his pressure and the way he comes forward. Yeah, he's a training partner also of Enrico Klen, so no, we know how good he is. Yep, Enrico Kale, known for his pressure, and is sitting at that top of the division. Sure, we'll get a shot against Pagani Vestati soon. But this is an exciting matchup to get the fight started. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Both gentlemen in their early 30s, height advantage, going to Petrov. The reach, slight advantage for Chris One professionally experienced you see a big edge 42 fights but he also has that glory experience going forward but as Antonio and I keep saying Petrov is known for those knockouts half of his wins coming by way of knockout and the rules for tonight three rounds three minutes each punches kicks and knees are all legals three knockdowns in a round or four in a fight will result in a TKO victory standing eight counts are now permitted the fights will be scored using the following prioritized criteria, starting with knockdowns, followed by damage, then number of clean scoring strikes, with an emphasis on spectacular techniques, followed by normal scoring strikes. Finally, if there's no clear advantage, judges look for aggression. And 
we also have open scoring tonight. Five judges will score the fight on the 10-point must system. Additional points are deducted for knockdowns or rule violations. The scores will be shown to everyone at home in the audience after each round. We are once again scheduled for three three-minute rounds in Glory's lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the black corner, a four-time Bulgarian national champion who brings with him a professional record of 14 wins with three losses, seven of those wins coming by way of knockout. At five feet, 10 inches tall, 1.78 meters, he weighed in at five time at 153.9 pounds, 69.8 kilograms. Fighting tonight out of Bulgaria, here is Drago Petra. Here now is his opponent fighting out of the white corner, a veteran of 40 plus fights, undefeated in two prior glory appearances. His professional record stands at 35 wins, six losses, one bout scored even, and 14 career knockouts. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, 1.75 meters. He weighed in at an even 154 pounds, 69.6 kilograms. Fighting tonight out of Germany, here is Chris the Raptor! And the referee in charge of this bout is Jan Frana. Fighters per minute. Check hands, front. Okay, good luck. Listen to my comments. Go back to the corners. Judges, time. And here we go. We're ready for this first fight here tonight. You have Chris One in the black gloves, Drago Petrov in the black gloves. Oh, Chris started very hard, didn't wait. And we can already see the power of Drago, the right hook. Yep, Drago's got a lot yeah. of knockouts. Yeah, there's no testing each other. They just go. That's why I love this fight. Yeah, Petrov was saying him and Chris won. were supposed to fight two previous times. So he's excited to get the chance to fight him tonight. Yeah, you can see the boxing technique of Drago, how he uses them and how he's hitting the right hand on the head of Chris. Ooh. He has real problems with that right hand. Yeah, and I like the eyes of Drago, the way he's slipping, pulling, using his legs as feints and then throwing attacks with his hands. Yeah, and a little bit good combinations, up, up, hook. It's all going, non-stopping. Yeah, and Petrov said these two do have similar styles. Both pressure fighters, both are aggressive. And he's right. They're For just now. standing in the yeah. center trading. For now, Chris cannot find a way to stop Petro. Petro is just working and hitting him. Yeah, and a few I mean, good counters, yeah. And I mean, it's very good. I like the way Petrov is mixing those angles with his hands and then really going for those knees. Ooh, almost hook for a hook, like the classical one. It's a great start for Petrov making his glory debut here tonight. Seems very relaxed in there. Very aggressive, too. Yeah, I think the Chris found his rhythm a bit. Ooh, big exchange there. As one tries to throw that overhand. Yeah. You can see the, the power in the shots of the Petrov are much more, but Chris is finding his rhythm. He's starting to finally to throw things and not waiting anymore just to get beat by the Petrov. Yeah, and I feel you had it. No, Chris one here is more experienced in the glory ring, so he's coming forward, calculated, but he's eating some big uppercuts as he's trying to come forward. Yeah, this is the classical kickboxing first round fight. No testing, no nothing. Just <laughs> go forward and try to take each other head. It's always the big question now is, can they keep this pace for round two and three? Yeah, if they keep it, this is be one of those legendary fights. Yeah, that's what we like to see. Good action. Back and forth. You can see the redness on the eye of Chris a little bit from the uppercut or hook from the left hand. Ooh. Nice catch and counter from the German, Chris One. Yeah, Chris found a better hit until now. Yeah, he's looking for that overhand right. I guess trying to set it up with that jab. Ooh, nice right hand from the Chris. Oh, but here comes Drago Petrov with those liver hooks. 
Stop. Stop. Oh, yeah. nice, nice. I like this, though, yes, Antonio. Yes. Throw the right hand, duck counter, come back at his face. Yeah. Great first round. We can see that Chris was a little bit reserved in the beginning, and now he's finding his rhythm and showing what he can do. Also great boxing because he was an amateur boxer before this, so he has a great experience in boxing. Yeah, and I mean, as we're talking about, he was nicknamed the Raptor, and outside of training, he's a police officer, so you know he's got a lot of toughness. He's training police back at home. A very good fighter, as we keep mentioning, 2-0 and in glory. And the local, Drago, Petrov fighting out of Bulgaria, 2003 European Senshi champion, which is a big organization here in Bulgaria. That's why every time he throws these combinations, he has the fans cheering for him. You can see the experience, and you can see also the experience from the last two, le two weeks ago, last fight against Samo Petje. Crazy. Yep, I mean, he looks calm, he looks relaxed, and he didn't look too tired in that corner, so we'll see how he comes out here in the second round. Yeah, he's ready to go. Cannot wait. Oh, nice up. Antonio, we, Drago had a great first round. Do you remember your first round ever in glory? Uh, yeah, I, re I remember it and not remember it because the <laughs> excitement was crazy. I was like like a kid in a dream park, like unbelievable. Yeah, and now look at you yeah, sitting, sitting here and sitting, getting still better. job, getting better. <laughs> Mr. Still your job. <laughs> Oh, there's that overhand back for Chris one. I would just like to see from Chris a little bit more knuckles in to get the power on the right hand. Yeah. He slaps it a bit. But not enough to slow Drago down as he's trying to mix his kicks. Yeah, Drago slowed every here and there with a high kick. That's like he's floating too. And you can see the judges scorecard. Three of the judges gave it to Petrov. One judge gave it to one, and one judge has a draw round. Ooh. Ooh, crazy they exchange. Crazy. They are standing in the middle and banging, just and, don't care. And they're countering for countering. Their hands are a little low. And both have good counters and good boxing. You can really see it. Yeah, this is great. I love when they keep mixing in the, the leg kicks or the body kicks. Drago going more for the head kick. Back to those knees. That's a great strategy for Petrov because once he has Chris one shelled up, the knees are available. Yeah, Chris, when he starts with combo, he just doesn't end. But the combinations from, from Drago are much stronger. Yeah, Petrov mixing it up a little bit. Chris one attacking the legs more. I would like to see a little more head movement for Petro when he's getting shot in that high guard. Just to exit a bit some counter, I think that will be like the top of the cake. Stop. Yeah, we saw Time. him pulling out, slipping in earlier in that first round, but I guess he just wants action as his mouth guard falls out. As what did you call it earlier, Antonio? The gum? Okay. Your gum? The gum, the gum, yeah, we call it the gum, just, just mm -hmm. gum. <laughs> Time. Hey. Is it a Holland or a Croatian thing? Uh, I just call it like that. I don't know. Maybe because uh, in North America we chew gum. Chew gum. Yeah. Also good one. <laughs> oh, look at oh. these guys. They are just going like crazy. It's unbelievable. Drago making a great performance in his debut here in Glory. Yeah, they are standing and bending, banging just nonstop. And nobody wants to take a step back. Look, Chris takes a step back, he comes back in. Drago takes a step back, comes back in. They don't let each other take any breaks at all and keep attacking the body to wear that gas tank down too. It's almost like a video game when you when you just play like the stand up in the middle of the ring and the last guy standing. It's like that when you don't know how to play and you just start smashing the buttons. Yeah, the old Tekken 3 <laughs> X and Zero combo. Great second round from both fighters. Yeah. Really enjoyable. Great fight to start us off, and we got some replays from it. Antonio, take us through some of these replays here. Yeah, we can see Drago hitting the big right hand, but he just missed the spot a few inches away. And this, this is what we are talking about. They are just standing and throwing like crazy men. That's what we like. 
yep. great fight. Back and forth, back and forth. No man is ready to take a step back, just go forward. They Beautiful put it in a gear and just go. I'm loving this fight so far. It's a good start. As some would say, Todd Grisham likes to say, the appetizer for the main meal coming in about 39 minutes. And you can see Chris is breathing very normally. He's ready to fight again. Petrov also doesn't seem to have any problems breathing. Very important third round here for Chris One, who wants to stay undefeated in the glory ring. Currently 2-0 in glory, ranked number six in the division. He just wants the bigger fight, and he needs a big win here. Yeah, Germany and Bulgaria starting to get some crazy talent here in the glory. Now you can see the judges, four out of the five, giving it to Petrov, which now means three out of the five have it for Petrov already. Chris One needs something big here. Stop. Are you agreeing with what the judges are having right now, Antonio? Uh, for now, yes. Yep, very but close. it's a good fight, very close. I think it's, for me right now, it's like in the middle somewhere because when one guy comes and takes a little bit over, the other guy just overtakes. So it's. <laughs> you can see how many strikes thrown here. Over 200 Big strikes action. they thrown from, yeah. Just non stopping action. Chris throws a little bit more like. Uh, Snappy, but Drago with power. And yeah, these are one of the fights that I don't like to be a judge for. It's sort of very difficult to score. A lot of action, back and forth. Yeah, look at it. Nobody wants to take a step back. And if they take a step back, they just start hitting. Stop. I'm very impressed with both gentlemen's gas tank. The only thing a little bit missing for me, for now it's only boxing. I would like to see more inside knees, body knees, low kicks, maybe calf kicks, yep. something like that. Stop. I agree. For me, one of the special hey. things a good kickboxer does is able to mix his boxing with his kicks. And I mean, third round here, and I think maybe the issue, Antonio, is every time, because the fight's in close range, maybe they're scared to throw those knees or the kicks to be countered. Yeah, that's for sure. But I would like to see it. Like pull the head, middle knee, very oh, yeah. strong. Boom. Yeah. And then push him off, then throw the yeah. kick. That would be beautiful to see. But both gentlemen putting on a show for everybody here in the stadium and at home. Just great fight. Ooh, Chris is eating some big Ooh. shots there. Just non-stop Make actions. And they both eat a big right hand and just continue like nothing happened. Nice level change, the kick combination. You see, one guy gives a high kick, the other guy returns immediately. Yep, one for one. Petrov was definitely right, saying they have similar styles, both aggressive, both high volume strikers. They're both basically fighting the same way. Body, and body, head, head, kick, kick. And you see now the home crowd Stop. coming for Petrov. We see, will he give him some advantages in the last 20 seconds? Well, the judges already have him up, winning. Three out of the five have it. 2018 going into this third round. Very close fight. Great fight. Great opening fight, really great. You can see both gentlemen thinking they won. Drago's on the ropes trying to get the crowd excited. Chris One has his hands up, but the official decision is coming when we come back.
All right, we welcome you back, and let's take a look at some of these highlights here in this exciting matchup. Both gentlemen stood in the center of the ring and went back and forth. Antonio, talk about these highlights for us. This is a very hard, tough fight for judges because I don't know myself how I will judge this because it's just back and forth. One guy gives a high kick, the other guy gets a high kick. One guy throws the body shot, the other guy throws the body shot. In every part of the fight, you had the one guy or the other guy winning. Like you see now, Chris going forward, Petrov immediately comes back. It's very hard for to fight to judge, and I think one guy will be made in the end of the evening because he will think he will want the fight. What I think was extra exciting here too is they weren't single shots. They both threw great combinations. They mixed levels. They mixed uppercuts. They put their knees and kicks behind. Very impressive fight, especially for the Bulgarian fighter, Dragomir Drago Petrov. Yeah, great opening fight. Yeah, great, great. Some of the final stats you can see it was Chris One trying to use his kicks where Dragomir Petrov found a little bit more success of using those knees in the clinch, which may have been the big difference here in this fight. You can see the similarities in punches. Both guys around 240 or 30 punches thrown. Yeah, and you can see both very high thrown strikes, strike thrown per minute, very close. But uh, Chris One a little bit more accurate, but let's see what the judges have for the final decision. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout goes the distance, so we go to the judges' scorecard. Here now are the totals from our five ringside judges. Two judges score the bout, 29-28, Petrov. Two judges score the bout, 29-28-1. And our fifth and final judge scores the bout, 30-28, for your winner by split decision. Drago Petrov! Your winner, the Bulgarian hero, Dragomir Petrov, really taking it in. Very emotional, and all fight week he was talking about it being a dream, not only to fight in glory, but to do it in Bulgaria and to have a performance like that against Chris One, who's number six in the lightweight rankings. To have a poor performance like that, there's a, definitely a lot of emotions. Yeah, yeah, you can see the emotions in his face, and you can see the guys respect each other because of this fight, and it's very good. I think either guy could want the fight, and in this time, judges took power a little bit more seriously than the vo volume of the punches. Yeah, I don't think Chris One lost a lot of respect. He kept the fight, the pace. He's now 2-1 in, in glory, but we'll see him doing more. But the night goes to Drago Petrov, who's now living it up, getting the crowd excited as he exits the ring. Coming up next, we have Edward Gafenku from Romania, the power hitter, nicknamed Blitz is taking on hometown Bulgarian, the youngster in Teodor Pistov. Our second preliminary bout of the evening, scheduled for three three-minute rounds in Glory's welterweight division. This Bulgarian bully carries a 50% knockout ratio to the glory ring. Here is Teodor Rustov. Here comes Teodor Rustov, only 22 years old here from Bulgaria. He's fighting out of Varna, Bulgaria. 22-year-old is making his glory debut, and there's a lot of excitement here in Bulgaria for him. Yeah, th this kid is crazy. He's only 22 years old, has that classic Bulgarian style of just going forward and never taking a step back. So I'm sure this is another great fight to see. He likes his heavy combination, and he's always going for the knockout. He is a two-division champion who made his debut at Collision 5 earlier this year. Please welcome Edward Gafanku. So 
Arthur Gavenku from Romania, nicknamed the Blitz for the way he comes forward and speed of his hands, the power in his boxing. He's all action and a very exciting fighter to watch. Well, Daniel Gita is a fan of his and has publicly praised him for his abilities. And I also publicly praised him for this song that he chose because I really like it. <laughs> That's a good one. I got it downloaded tonight. Let's go through the tail of the tape for this exciting matchup. Gafenku 30, as we keep saying, Christoph only 22 years old. He's taller and he has the reach advantage. Professionally experienced goes to Edward Gafenku, 22 fights to 17. But we know both of these gentlemen like knockouts, but the edge going to Gafenku. We are once again scheduled for three three-minute rounds in Glory's welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the black corner, his five-fight unbeaten streak dates all the way back to 2021. As a professional, 14 wins with three losses, seven of those wins coming by way of knockout. At six feet, one inch tall, 1.86 meters, he weighed in at 169 and one half pounds, 76.9 kilos, fighting tonight out of Varna, Bulgaria. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Theodore Ristov. Here now is his opponent, fighting out of the white corner, a two division champion who had a knockout of the year in 2019 with his tornado kick KO. His professional record, 17 wins with five losses. 11 of those wins have come by way of knockout. At five feet, 10 inches tall, 1.78 meters, he weighed in at five time at 169.3 pounds, 76.8 kilos. Fighting tonight out of Romania, please welcome Edward the Blitz Gavanku. And the third man inside the glory ropes, your referee is Goran Siverina. Fighting. Share gloves. Fair play. Don't punch after stop. Thank you. Go back to corner. Judge. 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 Here we go. Five. Our Fair second round. match of the prelim. Five. White gloves. For Edward Gafenku in the black gloves, Theodor Hristov. Yeah, I cannot wait to see how this how this fight plays out. They are both power punches going for knockouts, nothing else. One of the interesting things you'll notice right away is the body type difference. So, Antonio, take us through. Hristov being the taller fighter, Gafenku being the short, power, stockier guy. Yeah, of course. Hristov have advantages from this from distance and should keep the distance very high. One, two, push, kick. Uh, kicks just play around and walk and has the body type that has usually more conditioning But you can see the power punches from Gafenku. He's just coming in wild with the wild hooks and everything so s Doesn't need to but he could be generate more power with this body type oh, as he takes a Gafenku takes a low blow Neutral. A Very clean one Time. Mm. Neutral. It's The last thing you want to happen in the first round yeah, it was very clean, low blow, if I see correctly. And with a lot of people who may have never been hit low there, it takes a lot out of your gas tank sometimes. Oh. But that was Come right on. on the cup of defense. Yeah, that was like he was aiming. <laughs> I find that the low blows happen a lot, Antonio, when one pre fighter is pressuring and the other one is moving backwards, no kicking. Okay. A lot of times Time. they end up slipping up like that, Fight. but hopefully it doesn't happen again. You can see that Christo want to use the jab to call the to control the distance. Yep. And hit Gafenko. and move, like you yeah. said. Yeah, just hit and move and kick and move. But Gafenko just looking for a wild hook over his jab. Ooh, he almost had a knee coming in. Very nice knee. The 22 year old Christoph is showing some good eyes and distance management. Yeah. You can see the talent in him. 
the height was not for nothing. And he's starting to mix that front kick you were talking about, Antonio. Being that tall fighter, the front kick is one of your best weapons. I think also his best weapon is catch him when he's coming in with a knee to the face. Yep, I agree. Because when Gafenko comes in, he's like, he goes really low to, to get generate the power for that hook. And Gafenko only landing five strikes here. You can just see that's the distance management of Ristov. And the Bulgarian crowd is really cheering him on. The 22-year-old is a big rising star here. Yeah, really talented kid. He really talented. He's a two-time champion here in the big organization, Senshi here. And you can see the talent from him going from kick to knee to punch, moving, evading punches, good distance management. It's crazy talent. You'll even see him switching his stances sometimes momentarily to back up like that, throwing hooks as he's backing up. Now he's a southpaw with knees. Yeah, he's just now playing a game with Gafenko. The only thing is he needs to watch to not get hit with some crazy power shot because Gafenko is just going forward, throwing the crazy power shot and nothing else. One of the big things that you learn as you get older in the sport is you can't always throw with full power. So let's see if Kristoff can stay composed and continue to pick his way to a big victory or maybe get himself a nice knockout. Right now, Christoph is doing kickboxing, and Gafenko is looking like he's doing only boxing. I don't, I don't know, did he throw any kick or knee or anything? Just wild hooks and punches. Yep. But you can see the power on them. Yep, he's nicknamed the Blitz, and they're showing his signature strike as the arm kick, but as Antonio saying, very heavily reliant on his boxing and his power shots. Former soccer player and swimmer, now kickboxer better sports yes of course we have Theodor Christoph fighting out of Varna Bulgaria fighting style heavy combinations always looking for the knockout right now it's a, what I'm most impressed with is his distance management the way he's hitting and moving selecting his shots and he's doing it against an experienced older fighter as well yeah and doing it easy that's the main thing it's look natural to him like he doesn't that time, time. Ready for second the second round. round. Here we go, round two. Great first round for the 22-year-old Teodor Ristov. A little bit more urgency here now from Gafenku. Gafenku just now going. And from I can see his coach told him that just the counter, the kids had countered everything immediately. And as you've seen, the judges, all five of them, giving it to Ristov. Yes, very clean round for Ristov. Look at all these stats, it's all his stuff as well. Landed, thrown, percentages. He's sharp, look at him. He's moving his feet, oh, moving oh. his head. He got a knockdown. The crowd's going oh. wild for the youngster. Oh. It's crazy, I was just about to say that his distance management is crazy. It looked like he was waiting on the ropes and then caught Gafenko as he was coming in. Let's see how he reacts. Does he go for the kill or does he go back to picking his shots? Oh, look at that combination. Head, body, head. Into the knees. What a wild fighter is Theodore Hissop. I like this kid. And not only his distance manager, but head moving. Get he's up. just slipping everything that comes to him. Now he's trying to look for the uppercut as Gafenku comes in. Get up. You can see some boxing experience in him. Even that little front kick, and then he does a question mark kick right after it. Yeah, this kid can do all. Real talent, real talent. Man, the welterweights need to keep an eye on his stuff. He's making a great debut. He does everything well. He boxes, he found the knee, look at this pressure. He still needs to keep his chin down. Gafenku's still dangerous, he's whipping. Now he takes an angle, he's going for the kill. The crowd's going nuts, Antonio. Oh! <laughs> crazy exchanges, crazy exchanges is the last minute of this round. That was the kick that made Gafenku go viral in 2019. 
And the amount of combination that Hristo has is crazy. He's just throwing everything. Knees, kicks, question mark kicks, low kicks, changing, hoops. <laughs> Attacking the body, spinning back kicks. The list goes on of oh. what this kid can do. He just ate an overhand. He needs to be careful, but look at this going. Kafek Guzel. It looks like he's wobbly on his feet. His eyes just rolled back, but he's still coming forward. I think his stuff might knock him out. Kafenku's just walking on wobbly legs. Gotcha. I think one knee here or one big head kick or something from Ristov in the fight might be done. Yeah, he so just need to concentrate on one Ooh. big thing. It's that knee, Antonio. It's coming. Oh. Kafenku on wobbly legs. What an ending to that round for Teodor Ristov. Kafenku. Going back to his corner, his stuff went to the wrong corner. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like I said, this is a fight to watch. What a fight. Antonio, a lot of highlights here. Let's talk about him. Yeah, it's you can see here the head movement, the changing of the momentum, the changing of the cutting corners, everything from Christo. He just does everything now. He's looking like a superior fighter in every sense. And till the end of the fight, Gafrenko was just ready to fall. I don't even know how he kept himself on his legs. Oh, he was bouncing. Every every shot here, you can see his eyes roll back, come back. He was probably knocked out on his feet two or three times. Look at Gafrenko's eyes. Yes, and he's eating the knees to the head like nothing. Yeah, I'd be surprised Fine. if Edward Gafrenko know where he is right Second now. He's ate a lot of shots. His eyes were rolling back. I think this round, Tristo will end Gafrenko is everything goes good. Yeah, I would be surprised if Kavenku can survive this round. We know how tough Kavenku is. Can he take the onslaught from the 22-year-old? Time. Right Third now, Christomir has everything. Fight! Man, first fight for Christoph. He's already going to be on my list and one of my favorite fighters to watch. Jeez. Yeah, very talented kid. Cannot wait to see more of him in glory. And potentially have a new champion maybe here. And the best thing is, Antonio, we're 17 minutes away from the main oh, card. Please. I don't know. Are we going to have enough energy? We've got to control ourselves a little bit. Yeah, the fights are just getting better and better. From the crazy first fight to even crazy in second fight. And we are only in the prelims. Stop. This is, I think this is an important no, round for fight. Te Teodor Hristov to see how he can control himself, pick his shots. Ooh, backward shots. As Ristov lands eight as many strikes as Gafenku. And all in variety. We've seen boxes, kicking, knee, low kicks, middle kicks, everything. This kid is great. Yeah, he I'm really, very impressed. He really does everything. And for such a young age, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm really impressed here from her stuff. Just doing everything right here in his debut. And in his home. Even more special for him. Yeah, he cannot be more happy than this. The only thing he misses is a big knock knockout. Now that he's shown everything just to finish the fight. Fight! You know, we know Holland has a lot of great fighters, but Bulgaria has really wanted to step up and add a few more fighters to the roster. I know Robbie Timmers hasn't blinked once in this fight. Yeah, you can see the Bulgarian talent. And now knee, hand, hand, hooks, moving away. He's in southpaw too. That's how you know you're comfortable if you can get here in your glory debut and fight in both stances. Oh. That's where the knee comes, Antonio. Once you swipe that leg out, you mix the knee up the middle. Oh. He Take destroyed the base him. Away. Yeah. He destroyed him. his legs, body, head. It's it's, it's like looking an A-class a fighter against C-class fighter. Yeah, he's just playing with him. Ooh. He's just now trying things. He's got about 37 seconds here if he wants to try to find a knockout. Or yeah. he might be content here just staying safe, picking his shots. Because Kefenku's still whipping some big power shots. Yeah. And every time he opens, he just got, like, punished for that opening. Front kick up the middle for Hristov. 
As Gefenku looks for oh. a big overhand. Uh. There is no end right. in the tricks of bag of this young kid. <laughs> he just does everything right, and I'm loving it. Stop. He and does have a tough welterweight division. Uh. Yeah. But very talented, very exciting. This 22-year-old Bulgarian gets it done here in Bulgaria as the crowd goes nuts for him. Yeah, you cannot imagine a better debut than this. This is the best at this goal. The only better option if he finishes with a knockout, but even without the knockout, this was crazy impressive. Just the display of the skill of this kid. From kicks, sneeze, punches, moving, distant manager, everything. Well, he did a spectacular performance and we'll get the official decision is next. And you can hear the home crowd cheering him. We welcome you back to the Glory 89 prelims here in Bulgaria. And we had a spectacular fight here as Christoph took on Gafenku. Yeah, this is truly spectacular. The Christo, he just showed everything what he can do from boxing to moving to, it's just crazy. The talent this kid's here is Im impressive. Like really, I cannot wait to see him back. I'm already a fan and this is the first fight I see from him. And you can see how he mixes his strikes too. But what's most impressive to me about this young fighter is his eyes. Even though his hands might be there, his distance management, the way he moves, mixes his strikes. Great talent, unorthodox. Can't wait to see more from Theodor Christoph. That, thir that third round yeah. for Christoph, he laid off the gas pedal a little bit, yeah. but just showed how he can stay composed. Yeah, till the end of the round, he was just playing and trying things, flying knees, spinning kicks, going to body, head, throwing knees. Really, this is pure talent. Let's take a look at some of the stats and look at it, it's all Christoph from the punches, the kicks, the knees, the totals. Look at Gafenku, 15 of 110, where Christoph landed 110 of 211. That's insane. That's what distance management and good defense is. Ladies and gentlemen, after three hard-fought rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. All five of our ringside judges see the bout and score the bout the same, 30-26. A unanimous decision for your winner, Tina Ristov! Your winner by unanimous decision, Theodor Ristov, with an impressive debut here in his hometown in Bulgaria. Just a great, young, talented fighter. Record is now 15-3 with seven KOs and a successful debut, the most important one in his career, just happened. Antonio, how are you finding the fight so far? How is it sitting in this chair here tonight? Well, it's very nice, and if, if the fights are gonna continue like this, I am in a true night of pleasure. It's crazy. Even the prelims are this good, I cannot wait to see what the main card has to offer. It's crazy. And you're giving us some great breakdowns, great insights, so hopefully everyone at home is enjoying this type of commentary because we really yeah. want to give you all those details tonight for everyone watching. Yeah. I hope I'm really good at stealing people's job. We still got more coming up, Antonio. 
as we're under 10 minutes from Glory 89. Please welcome one of the representatives from the Bulgarian Fight Agency, Elena Teneva. Thank you, team. Здравейте, Бургас! Здравейте, Bulgaria! Hello, everybody! Тази вечер пишем история, а всички вие сте част от нея. Това, което искам да кажа кратко и бързо е, че благодаря на всички наши партньори тази вечер, без които това събитие нямаше как да се осъществи. Всички партньори, които са навсякъде тук в залата. Тук е момента да благодаря и на моите партньори от Bulgarian Fight Agency. Теодор и Ренат, момчета, справихте се прекрасно. И не на последно място, един човек, който е тук при нас в залата, искам да го посоча, човек, който направи всичко възможно това бойно шоу, да дойде в България. Това е... Бургас е първия домакин на Глори на Балканите. С него е първи в историята домакин на България. Димитър Николов, аплодисменти! Той е тук сред нас. Предстои най-интересното от Fight картата, а ние сме ви подготвили още една изненада. Оставям микрофона на най-добрия Voice of Glory, Team Yus. Elena, thank you. For our international audience, allow me to translate what Elena was saying. She was saying that the reason that Glory is here in beautiful Bulgaria is because of the work of the mayor of Bragas, who is here with us ringside, Mr. Dimitar Nikolov, along with the Bulgarian Fight Agency. It's the very first Glory event in Bulgaria and is a proud moment for the city of Burgas and, of course, for all of Bulgaria. But I would add to that that it's a very proud moment as well for the Glory Kickboxing Organization. We thank you for your very warm welcome to your beautiful country. And Glory 89 Bulgaria is coming up next. We are back here with Glory 89 with just over six minutes to go, but which will feature the big fight between Badr Hari and Uku Yerendal. Badr Hari excited to be back in the ring, especially here in Bulgaria. Let's hear what he has to say. I think uh, Bulgaria is uh, a new adventure in uh, kickboxing sports. Uh, I've never been here, so uh, it's a new uh, environment. But uh, what I see is uh, that people are really uh, enjoying fighting sports and uh, kickboxing uh, particularly. I'm looking forward for Saturday and I'm, I'm, I'm not only for Saturday, but also uh, for the future of uh, Bulgarian kickboxing. So I think this is a great step. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, energized to, to be part of this uh, big uh, event and uh, big step for uh, Bulgarian uh, kickboxing history. You train in a different way for for opponent, but uh, when you reach the highest level of, of competing, uh, you just make some adjustments along the way, and uh, at the end, it's all about my capacity to to be smart and to be smarter than my my opponent. I think uh, with the adjustments that we made, I think we'll do a great job on Saturday.
think this is a good way to connect with your fan base. I think uh, we have a lot of fans around the world, but uh, seeing uh, your fighters on television or seeing them uh, visiting your country, I think this makes a big difference in connecting with, uh, with the athletes and the athletes with their fans. So yeah, I think it's a great step for glory and a great step for kickboxing also, and uh, especially for our fighters to come and visit our fans uh, in real life. And we welcome you back, and we just saw a nice clip of Badr Hari, and those kickboxing fans around the world know when Badr Hari's fighting is one of the most special things here in kickboxing. Antonio, you train with Badr. How has he been prepared and ready for a fight here tonight? I can tell you only that he's ready. He's really ready this time, and uh, the explosion, the power, everything is that. You've seen the small clips of him hitting. Ooh, you don't want to get hit by that. Yeah, Botter is known for his knockouts, his power, and his finishes. And he's going to have a tough one here against Uku tonight, who's also a big heavyweight with some good power as well. So what do you take from this fight? What would someone like the big guy have to do to beat Badr Hari? I think uh, it's the thing. Will the Uku can come in with his hooks and try to connect? Because Uku is also a very powerful guy, big knockout power. And if you get caught with one of these hooks, doesn't matter if it's left or right, you are going down. So the bother thing is distance manager and Uku thing is to go inside. Yep, well, we're going to have to wait to see that fight. But we just had some spectacular fights here on the prelim. I mean, these Bulgarian fighters took over. You know, we've seen this last fight, especially with Teodor Hristov. It was a fantastic performance. And even earlier the night with Dragomir Petrov. What did you take from those first two prelims, Antonio? If the f next fight are going to be like the prelims, we are in a wide night of enjoyment because it's crazy. The two prelims fight only got better and better. The first one was an all-out war. The second one, we, said, we all saw the talent of Christo and what he can do. Yeah, I mean, these Bulgarians are really taking over here tonight. 2-0 for Team Bulgaria. But later tonight, we have the biggest one of them all, Stoyan Koprivlinski. You know, he's got a big rematch fight against Soren Kaliniak. You also train with Stoyan. What does he have to do tonight to be successful with this pressure here in Bulgaria? I think Stoyan needs to keep his combinations up, keep his leg kicks up, and just outwork the guy because Sorin is a dangerous knockout power, so he just needs to go around, kick him, push him, and you make use of his combination. Yeah, well, that's gonna be our co-main event tonight, but if you look at that countdown time, we're less than two minutes to the main show here at Glory 89, and we wanna make sure everybody at home can watch it. So everyone, make sure you head over to gloryfights.com to kind of see where you can watch it all around the world. It changes, so make sure you go gloryfights.com. We'll give you all your information, and we'll see you now in about a minute and a half for the main show in Glory 89 here in Bulgaria. <laughs>